Justin Trudeau set his sight on Scott Moe once again with his smug taunts and partisan potshots. The Prime Minister just can't seem to resist an opportunity to belittle those who dare challenge his policies. When questioned about rising tensions with Moe during a recent press conference, Trudeau whipped out some vicious words. He boasted that the Canada Revenue Agency was extremely capable of collecting any taxes owed by Saskatchewan, practically daring Moe to take them on. Then Trudeau twisted the knife even further, wishing Mo good luck dealing with the CRA in a tone dripping with mockery. So much for thoughtful policy debates. Trudeau seems convinced that taunting dissenters is the path to victory. The Prime Minister also took partisan shots at Conservative leader Pierre Polyev for having the audacity to speak with protesters. Apparently engaging respectfully with citizens who have opposing views is forbidden in Trudeau's Canada. Canadians, premiers, and even allies oppose the carbon tax, but Trudeau is incessant on continuing down the corrupt path. How long can this combative approach continue before we demand better? Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we jump into today's video, take a second to sign up for our exclusive uncensored newsletter. The mainstream media won't report Trudeau's scandals and corruption, but our newsletter delivers the raw truth to your inbox daily. We'll leave you the link in the description box. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. Justin Trudeau keeps demonstrating his penchant for petty insults and partisan attacks directed at anyone who dares to oppose any of his nonsensical and outright corrupt policies and programs, all while he is criticizing conservatives for supposedly doing the very thing he champions throughout his tenure as a prime minister. This time, Scott Moe, premier of Saskatchewan, was the target of Trudeau's latest verbal attacks and sarcastic lampooning in regards to Moe's incessant stand against the unjustifiable and corrupt carbon tax that will negatively affect the families of Saskatchewan. This all started with Trudeau being questioned in a press conference during his visit to Saskatchewan about his lack of recent meetings with Premier Scott Moe and what he plans to do about Moe's opposition to the carbon tax. Trudeau then proceeded to give the same old tired and debunked speech about how the carbon tax is actually beneficial to the families and how the rebates will bring in more money in comparison to what the families have to pay. And then he finally proceeded to address the elephant in the room and talked about how there are measures put in place to make sure that money that is owed to the federal government is being paid through the Canada Revenue Agency. Um, you were here in January of last year at Vital Metals, and uh, back again this year. Last year, you did not have a chance to meet with uh, Premier Scott Moe, and this year, there's no plan to meet with him again. Um, I know he's been wanting to meet with you to speak about the carbon tax. So why no meeting this time around? Um, we, as we always do, we let the Premier's office know uh, I was coming to town and uh, uh, and uh, and they said, uh, that's good, uh, we don't need a meeting right now, or they, they, weren't, uh, they weren't able to organize a meeting right now. That's fine. I'm always happy to talk about the fact that we're putting a price on pollution right across the country that puts more money back in the pockets uh, of families in Saskatchewan. Uh, eight out of ten families across the country in regions where we've put in the price on pollution actually do better off with the price on pollution because we price pollution and then we send the Canada carbon rebate checks uh, to families across those jurisdictions and low-income and middle-income families almost entirely do better off. It's $1,800 uh, this year for families in Saskatchewan, a family of four in Saskatchewan, which is more than the cost of the price on pollution that we've put in. So this is a way of both fighting climate change, fighting the droughts uh, and forest fires that are more and more regular because of extreme weather events linked to climate change, but also putting more money in families' pockets with a check that just last arrived on October 15th, uh, sorry, April 15th uh, last week, that is helping families with the costs of everything from food or fuel to rent, whatever it is uh, that they're spending on, that money shows up from the federal government. And I will add, despite the disagreement I have with the uh, provincial government here in Saskatchewan on them not wanting to uh, pay uh, the federal government what is owed, the Canada carbon rebate checks going to families in Saskatchewan will not be impacted by uh, the government of Saskatchewan's decision. We're going to continue to deliver the Canada carbon rebate to families right across Saskatchewan, despite the fact that Premier Mo uh, is not sending that money to Ottawa right now. Um, 
Canada Revenue Agency has uh, ways of ensuring that uh, that that uh, money that is owed to them uh, is is eventually collected, uh, and we have faith in the uh, rigorous. Uh, you know, quasi-judicial proceedings that the Canada Reg uh, Revenue Agency uses. If that wasn't a clear threat from Trudeau, wrapped in political jargon and vagueness, then I don't know what is. Oh, what, it gets much worse actually since Trudeau doubled down on his comments later on in another press conference and delivered the same threat in a sarcastic tone. Trudeau dismissively wished Mo good luck in a sarcastic tone as the Premier prepares to stand up to the Canada Revenue Agency over Saskatchewan's refusal to collect the federal carbon tax on natural gas. Trudeau promised that the CRA is very capable of collecting money that is owed and he has full confidence in their abilities to the point where he would never wish to stand against them on any matter. First of all, there's been no change in position. We believe that delivering uh, money to Canadians through the Canada Carbon Rebate uh, is a good thing for the fight against climate change and a good thing to help with affordability. In fact, in federal jurisdictions where the backstop is applied, that is most provinces, eight out of ten families, particularly middle class and low income families, get more money off of the CCR check that just landed last Monday on April 15th uh, than uh, they pay out on the price on pollution. And that was core to our designing of a way to fight climate change in a way that supports affordability for Canadians. And that's what it's doing right across the country, putting more money back in people's pockets and fighting climate change at the same time. Now, Premier Mo has decided that he doesn't want to pay the money to CRA that he is owing. We're not going to penalize the people of Saskatchewan or in any jurisdiction for that because we have faith in CRA, which is an independent agency, to collect the money that is owed. Now, I don't know about you, but having an argument with CRA about not wanting to pay your taxes is not a position I want anyone to be in. Good luck with that, Premier Mo. Uh, CRA is an independent organization that is very, very good at getting money it is owed from Canadians, from businesses, and now from provinces if it has to. We don't have to do anything as a federal government. The CRA is independent and will go through its proper judicial legal processes, and I have no doubt it will get there eventually. What a very just and democratic prime minister who will go on and threaten other premiers and officials if they even dare to oppose his slimy liberal agenda. There is no honor or respect with Trudeau in charge, and he is more than happy to showcase how smug he can be with all the undeserved power he has over hardworking Canadians. Trudeau's smug attitude shows his lack of respect for leaders with opposing views and his unwillingness to engage in meaningful policy debates. Mo is not challenging Trudeau to virtue signal to his voter base or take part in useless political posturing. He is advocating for the people of his province who rightly see the carbon tax as an excessive burden on families and businesses already struggling with high inflation. But rather than address these valid concerns, Trudeau opts for juvenile taunts as if standing on principle is foolish. When Canadians already know who is the true fool in this situation, this corrupt tax has been unpopular across many regions of the country, especially among lower-income Canadians who feel the pinch more severely. Trudeau, though, continues to forge ahead in typical heavy-handed fashion, dismissing dissenting perspectives from premiers like Mo and even liberal allies like Andrew Fury. It is nothing more than a liberal elitist mindset that views leaders outside major urban centers as simplistic and worthy of ridicule rather than discussion. How ironic is it that Trudeau was smugly threatening Scott Moe about not paying the federal government their carbon tax and challenging the CRA, when Trudeau himself has faced ethics probes over issues like failing to properly disclose expensive vacations using taxpayers' money? For Trudeau to imply Moe's stance is scandalous, is the ultimate laughable hypocrisy. But is always a new low with Trudeau in charge. And it has gotten so low that even the likes of Stephen Gilbo found the confidence to spring to Trudeau's defense and support his vague threats by explaining how the CRA is an independent agency and how it is just going to do its job and nothing more. The CBC, just following up on the business with Saskatchewan Police, could you explain what will happen with this decision and where does it, things lie with with your uh, dealings with the provincial government? AOC en français pour les personnes de Francesco Arquipa français. Um, 
I have the pleasure of serving as Canada's Environment and Climate Change Minister and not as the President of the Canadian Revenue Agency. So I, I can't in detail uh, tell you what, what is going to, to, to happen, but the, the Prime Minister has tasked the CRE to ensure that the, 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 the money that is owned by the government of Saskatchewan to the federal government is, is collected. And, and then the, and the CRA has an, an array of uh, quasi-judicial tools to be able to, 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 to get money that it's own, uh, owed to them, whether it's by individual companies or, in that case, a, a province. And I think the, 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 what the Prime Minister said this morning is that he has uh, great confidence that the CRA will be able to achieve this goal. As if it wasn't clear enough that Trudeau is trying to utilize his corrupt bureaucratic regime to scare away justified opposition to nonsensical taxes. It is easy to talk about the law and how it will be enacted. It does not change that it was clearly a threat and one that is aimed at something Trudeau is clearly fed up with. Trudeau does not want you to keep talking and fighting the carbon tax because he wants this to be the status quo. And using the law to fight dissents is just the first step in fighting opposing speech. How is this democratic and fair exactly? But of course the clown show on display was not enough for Trudeau, so he couldn't pass of an opportunity to hurl partisan punches at conservative leader Pierre Polyev over videos showing Polyev briefly interacting respectfully with anti-carbon tax protesters. Trudeau branded this irresponsible and stoking divisions, fear and polarization, a rich accusation coming from one of the most intentionally divisive prime ministers ever. Uh, your opponent was photographed posing with anti-carbon tax protesters flying F. Trudeau flags. In, that, in the video, Pierre Polyev is heard saying that you are a liar and everything you say is, quote, bullshit. Can, you, can we get your response, please? Every politician has to make choices about what kind of leader they want to be. Are they a the kind of leader that is going to exacerbate divisions, fears, and polarization in our country, make personal attacks, and welcome the support of conspiracy theorists uh, and extremists. Because that's exactly what Pierre Polyev continues to do, not just when he, you see him engaging with members of Diagolon, but also when he refuses to condemn and reject the endorsement of Alex Jones. Alex Jones is a proven liar and conspiracy theorist who you know, had to pay, has to pay millions, hundreds of millions of dollars because he lied about the Sandy Hook killing that killed 20 little kids. This is the kind of man who's saying Pierre Polyev has the right ideas uh, to bring the country towards the right, towards conspiracy theories, towards extremism, towards polarization, towards the kind of lies that Alex Jones is peddling still. So the fact that Pierre Polyev hasn't stood up to condemn that endorsement, the fact that he continues to encourage the kind of divisive approaches to Canada that uh, I don't think Canadians want to see, really shows that he will do anything to win, anything to torque up negativity and fear. And it only emphasizes that he has nothing to say to actually solve the problems that he's busy amplifying. Trudeau has not shied away from name-calling and distortions when it suits him politically. Yet he has the gall to paint Polyev's cordial conversations with citizens as some great sin. It reveals Trudeau's fundamental disdain for viewpoints that differ from his own progressive ideology. Polyev has tapped into very real frustrations among struggling Canadians feeling left behind economically. His willingness to listen to citizens of all political stripes shows a leader focused on inclusive solutions in contrast to Trudeau's partisan attacks. But Trudeau lacks the self-awareness to recognize his own polarizing tactics. This pattern of behavior from the Prime Minister, petty insults of premiers, partisan cheap shots, unwillingness to meaningfully discuss policy, continues to divide a time when Canada needs leadership that can unite a diverse country. Trudeau's arrogance blinds him to perspectives beyond the elite Ottawa bubble. His dismissive treatment of a premier advocating for his citizens shows a leader who values political point scoring above respectful discourse. 
is so blind in his crusade for the carbon tax he doesn't take the time to look at the facts and how, with each passing day, allies are waking up to the reality and true cost of this useless green ambition. Even the slimy NDP leader Jagmeet Singh can't find the proper words to fully back and support the carbon tax, even when he can't bring himself to fully oppose it and continues to follow the Trudeau guideline of hurling insults at opposition when they are being supported by the majority of Canadians. Will an NDP government keep the Liberals' carbon price plan to $170 per ton by 2030? Well, what we said is on, on the carbon price, our position hasn't changed. We believe there's a price so, on the you, position will, that should be there. Will you keep it then? Will you keep that part, a carbon price plan to $170 per ton by 2030? Well, so far, what we said is that our position hasn't changed. But we are, we are saying that the Liberals' plan yeah. is unfair. And there's elements of that plan that are very unfair. And I've outlined one specific element, which I think is glaring in how unfair it is. The Liberals think it's okay to give billions of dollars to oil and gas companies to subsidize them, particularly when they're highly profitable. They're making record profits. Why does that make any sense to continue to give them billions of dollars? And then say to working people, we don't have any money for you to support you in trying to put in place a thermal pump or, or a heat pump in your home. That's unfair. And that type of approach is something that Canadians look at and say, well, that doesn't really feel like we're all fighting this climate crisis together. You're, you're choosing big oil and gas over us. And so what we've said, our plan that we will put forward is one that is fair for working people, takes on the big polluters, and lowers our emissions. Mickey, do you have a follow-up? Um, I do. I guess, you know, that's kind of what the Conservatives are campaigning on is, you know, uh, put the responsibility more on heavy admitters. Um, Not at all. We're going. Well, they have campaigned on that in the past and they want to scrap the carbon price. We've heard Poly Pierre Polyev's Conservatives say they want to scrap the carbon price plan. We know where the Liberals stand on this, yet there's confusion over where the NDP stands on this. Why can't you give Canadians a clear answer of whether or not you support the carbon price and whether you do support it going to $170 per ton by 2030. This has been in place since 2019. We know the position of the Conservatives. We know the position of the Liberals. Why, why does there appear to be sudden backpedaling of this? Well, well, first of all, I think that we've got to be clear. The Conservatives' plan is no plan. They want to allow for big polluters to pollute as much as they want. They have no such plan to say they want to re reduce pollution. They're saying to Canadians, you know those big polluters that dump toxic waste in rivers? No price on that. Dump as much as you want. The big polluters that pollute our air, that pollute our land, our water, they can do whatever they want. So we should be very clear about what Polyev is saying. He's saying pollute as much as you want, make as much profit as you want, and damage the environment, damage our planet, damage kids as much as you want. That's the conservative plan. And people can make a choice if they think that's okay, but that is actually their plan. Pollute as much as you want. The Liberals' plan is unfair. Now, the price on pollution is just one piece of taking on the climate crisis. If that is the entirety of the plan, then that is a colossal failure as well. There's much more to taking on the climate crisis than just the price on pollution. And we know that the Liberals have other elements to it, which are very abundantly un unfair. And I've pointed those out. Our position has not changed, we've said. We maintain that the price on pollution is important, but I've given you a very concrete example, and I've given Canadians a concrete example of how the Liberal plan is unfair. Why is it they have billions of dollars for oil and gas companies to subsidize them with our money for free for record-making, record profit-making companies, but they don't have money for Canadians to say, we want to install a heat pump? Imagine a, a ways for Canadians to choose a heat pump that will help them make that right choice to lower their costs, to lower their emissions, and make life more affordable. That would have a, a significant impact on our fight against the climate crisis. And that's what we're talking about when we talk about the unfair approach of the Liberals. I support our price on pollution, but I do not support the Liberals' approach, which is unfair, which pits everyday Canadians on one side and big oil and gas companies on the other, and they choose big oil and gas. That is wrong. Nonetheless, Canadians are already against the carbon tax in droves, premiers are standing their ground and are opposing the unjust tax, and even allies can't find any reason to support this green venture any further, then why is Trudeau still incessant on holding the minority opinion in the matter? Does he think he is taking part in counterculture or something? Does he think people will write poems about their Canadian savior long after he has left office? Canadians deserve substantive debates on issues like affordability, inflation, energy policy, and more, not juvenile sarcasm and self-righteous lecturing.
Trudeau's combative tone and close-minded approach continue to divide when what we need is a leader willing to bring Canadians together. His name-calling of Polyev and taunting of Mo reveal an ultimately small leader unwilling to engage earnestly with those who see things differently. Our divisions will not heal through sarcasm and mockery, but through sincere listening, humility, and focusing on shared hopes for a better future. That is the common sense leadership Canada needs now more than ever. Well, that's all for now. What do you think of Trudeau's sarcastic dismissal and vague threat against Scott Moe's carbon tax opposition? Will Trudeau continue exerting more unnecessary pressure on opposing premiers? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.